what it really meant was words like I and me were excessively theoretical for Alexia. She certainly had an identity and a heart that felt emotions and all that. She simply had no soul. Miss Alexia, age six, had nodded politely at the nice silver-haired gentleman. Then she had made certain to read oodles of ancient Greek philosophy dealing with reason, logic, and ethics. If she had no soul, she also had no morals. So she reckoned she had best develop some kind of alternative. Her mama had, had thought her a blue stocking, which was soulless enough so far as Mrs. Loonville was concerned and was terribly upset by her eldest daughter's propensity for libraries. It would be too bothersome to have to face her mama in one just now. Lord Macon moved purposefully towards the door with the clear intention of acquiring Mrs. Loontwill. Alexia caved with ill grace. Oh, very well. She settled herself with a rustle of skirts onto a peach brocade Chesterfield near the window. The Earl was both amused and annoyed to see that she had managed to pick up her fainting pillow and place it back on the couch without his registering any swooping movement. I came to the library for tea. I was promised food at this ball. In case you wouldn't notice, no food appears to be in residence. Lord Macon, who required a considerable amount of fuel, mostly of the protein inclination, had noticed. The Duke of Snodgrove is notoriously reticent about any additional expenditure at his wife's balls. Victuals were probably not on the list of acceptable offerings. He sighed. A oh, man owns half a Berkshire and cannot even provide a decent sandwich. <laughs> Miss Terravani made a sympathetic movement with both hands. My point, precisely. So you will understand that I had to resort to ordering my own repast. Did you expect me to starve? The Earl gave her generous curves a rude once over, observed that Miss Terabody was nicely padded in exactly the right places and refused to be suckered into becoming sympathetic. <laughs> he maintained his frown. I suspect that is precisely what the vampire was thinking when he found you without a chaperone. An unmarried female alone in a room in this enlightened day and age. Why, if the moon had been full, even I would have attacked you. Alexia gave him the once-over and reached for her brass parasol. My dear sir, I should like to see you try. <laughs> Being Alpha made Lord Macana a tad unprepared for such bold rebuttals. Even with the Scottish past, he blinked at her in surprise for a split second and then resumed the verbal attack. You do realize modern social mores exist for a reason. I was hungry. Allowances should be made. Alexia said, as if that settled the matter, unable to understand why he persisted in harping on about it. <laughs> Professor Lyle, unobserved by the other two, was busy fishing about in his waistcoat for something. Eventually, he produced a mildly beaten up ham and pickle sandwich, wrapped in a bit of brown paper. He presented it to Miss Terabody, ever the gallant. Under normal circumstances, Alexia would have been put off by the slightly disreputable state of the sandwich. But it was meant so kindly, and offered with, with such diffidence, she could do nothing but accept. It was actually rather tasty. This is delicious, she stated, surprised. Professor Lyle grinned. And keep them around for when his lordship gets particularly testy. Such offerings keep the beast under control for the most part. He frowned and then added a caveat. Excepting at full moon, of course. With that wood that a nice ham and pickle sandwich was all it took then. Miss Terabody perked up, interested. What do you do at full moon? Lord Macon knew very well Miss Terabody was getting off the point intentionally. Driven beyond endurance, he resorted to the use of her first name. Alexia. It was a long, polysyllabic, drawn-out growl. She waved the sandwich at him. Hmm. Do you want half of this, my lord? <laughs> His frown became even darker, if such a thing could be conceived. Professor Lyle pushed his glasses up onto the brim of his top hat, where they looked like a strange second set of mechanical eyes, and stepped into the breach. Mr. Abotti, I do not believe you quite realize the delicacy of this situation. 
unless we can establish strong grounds for self-defense by proving the vampire was behaving in a wholly irrational manner, who could be facing murder charges? Alexia swallowed her bite of sandwich so quickly she partly choked and started to cough. <coughs> what? Lord Macon turned his fierce frown on his second. Now who is being too direct for the lady's sensibilities? 